Welcome to Awakening You channel. If you appreciate what we do, please support us. Thank you. Dear ones. I am Archangel Michael. Another week ends. As I said, this week I spoke about several subjects, all related to the journey of your souls. I am focusing excessively on feelings, because they are what make all the change within you. Be sure, the journey is difficult, full of obstacles, but most importantly, it is possible. It is not a completely inaccessible path, it has obstacles, yes, often difficult to overcome, but everyone can be. So, today I'm going to end this week talking about a very important subject, in this whole context, which are beliefs. There are two ways to approach this subject. First, I'm going to talk about what we all call limiting beliefs. What are these widespread, limiting beliefs? It's everything that was taught, which was often even imposed on you, so that you would stay away from your spiritual evolution. As I already said, this is not the time to talk about religions yet. You are not yet ready to hear the whole truth. Many know the truth, but the vast majority do not. It is not the time yet, the truths will come, but they will be like a great avalanche of information that will destroy everything you believed in for so long. But back to limiting beliefs. Many people ask, but what are these limiting beliefs? Typically, Limiting beliefs are rules, rules that were passed down and that, if broken, make you totally vulnerable, they make you totally distant from above, because you become sinners. This word was created to establish a label for those who do not follow what is preached. If we are talking about religions, what is preached by their religions, if we are talking about society, what is preached by its government regimes. So then you become one a contrary, an anti-anything, I'm not going to give labels here. In neither case is there freedom of thought, in neither case is it permitted to break these rules, because whoever breaks, is going against, is being contrary to the entire movement. But let's talk about the general context. The general context is to keep them increasingly separate, increasingly discriminatory, increasingly judgmental, because if in the environment you are in, there is a rule, you cannot go beyond that point this is a rule. And then there is another universe, another group that goes beyond that point. So you think you have the right to judge those as wrong, as criminals, because they did something that you cannot do. So you judge, you condemn, you impose sentences, and so on, because that was a limiting belief in what you believed, of that religion that form of government. What is the biggest cause of separation between people? There are many, but the main one is religions, in which each person is led to believe in certain dogmas, and that that is the best of everything, that the rest is no good. Their gods are better than those of others, their forms of conduct are better than those of others. So you think you're superior. In the same way, those who are part of another regime, or another religion, think the same way. So you look at each other, not as brothers, you look at each other as enemies, and what's worse, you intervene in other people's lives because they don't follow what you believe. Many times even killing, for the simple fact that someone else doesn't accept what you believe. And I'm not just talking about religion, I'm talking about government regimes too. So realize that there is a big point of separation, a big point of breaking the union. And as the phrase you say, which is very strong, says, union is strength, and then I will add one more, disunity weakens everyone. Then you became weak. None of you have any power, you have become weak because you have isolated yourselves, you created clans, you created groups, created sex, created millions of separatist things. That other brother is seen by you as a great enemy, just because he doesn't think the same as you. He follows other paths. And then many will ask, but what is the right path? Ah, this is the big question. There is only one way, one in which you respect and love our father or mother God, 
and love your brother as yourself. This is the only way, it is the path of unconditional love, in which you love your brother next door, regardless of what he is or what he does. With a full understanding that the mistakes he makes are paths he chose, that his soul chose, and that you have to respect. You don't have to hate him because of that. Ah, but it's very complicated for us to love someone who hurt us. Ah, but therein lies the great teaching. When you are able to truly forgive those who have done you wrong, and I will add here, any kind of evil, then you will be ready for unconditional love, because you were also part of a lesson together with that being. You went through suffering caused by him, because you had to, because they made choices. I'm going to stay here enumerating a lot of things, he is not the only one to blame. No event is a one-way street, there are two paths that cross at a certain point, so that both can learn a lesson. And why did those paths cross? By choices, usually due to bad choices, or for a great lesson to be taught, or because you are attracting what you are emanating. So we can say that that other brother, who did him great harm, was just an instrument of destiny to show him this lesson, to show you the path you are following, to open your eyes to what you are doing with your life. So don't blame him. You often attract bad things into your paths, because you emanate fear, and emanating fear, everything bad comes together. You don't trust. You get tired of saying, you shout all the time, ah, I have faith. Faith in what? Faith that we will free you from danger at all times? It depends. It depends on how you're putting yourself. It doesn't hurt to repeat. If you are emanating good energy, you may even suffer something, but you will come out unharmed. How many people suffer very serious accidents and come out unharmed, as if nothing had happened? There we were, because that person was involved in that situation, not by them, naturally those around him had lessons to learn. She does not. So she was protected. Yes, we were there. Now if you are emanating fear all the time, how can we be close? We will not be able. So what is this faith that you have, in which you leave home, ah, may God protect me, and every step he takes, am I going to be hurt today? Will something happen to me today? Look at the fear. Where is the faith? Where is the confidence that you are really protected? Because those who trust know that they are protected and do not worry. Of course, there are paths you choose. Very good. You are a person who vibrates high, you are a person who is always happy with life, he is an enlightened person. We're close. At a certain point, you decide to risk your life. Let's go, repeat. You are an enlightened person and we are always around. But you decide to do something that puts your life at risk. What will we do? Will we remain close? Of course not, because at that moment you made a choice, the choice to risk, to lose your life, risk being attacked, risk being hit. So once again we walked away. So many act this way, they think they are extremely protected, extremely enlightened, and then they do what they want, no, I am protected, I can do what I want. No, it's not like that, my brothers. No it's not like that. You also have to make the right choices. It's not trusting that we're there all the time, but exposing yourselves to danger. It was a choice you made. So we move away, because you are showing a total lack of love in your life. This is what I already said about suicide. It's as if you were putting your suicide in your path, because you made that choice to take a risk. So, my brothers, faith is not throwing us, the beings that protect you, everything, in other words, ah, I have faith, and I go out into the world doing a lot of nonsense, because you have faith, and because you have faith we will be there fixing everything wrong you do, because you have faith. This was passed on to you, you just need to have faith. Have faith and you will be protected 100% of the time.
No, it's not like that. That's why you are the way you are, that's why your world ended up the way it did, because you make millions of wrong choices by faith. I know this is wrong, but I was told it was right, so I'm going to follow it. But I know it's wrong, but someone said that I had to stay here, because I have to respect my faith, I have to respect the government regime that is guiding me. Very good. You are alienated, because you are letting yourself be carried away by what someone else is saying, even though your heart is screaming, jumping in front of you, saying, don't go there, it's wrong. But you will, because you have to follow your faith, you have to follow the regime you chose. And then you only cause people to stumble, you just make more and more mistakes, and that is what was done to you. So. Limiting beliefs are exactly that, doing what the other person tells you, without thinking, without analyzing, if what the other person is, okay, I'll change the verb, guiding, is correct for you. Is that good for you? Will that make you happy? Ah, I don't care. I have to follow what I am being guided by. Very good. So follow what you are being guided by. Follow your limiting belief. Now don't blame us later, because you don't see the result of your faith, because faith is in anything, it is not just in the ethereal, it is also faith in the rulers that you choose. This is a faith, it is a trust. What is faith? It's trusting that the other person will do what you ask. This is faith. So you have faith in many forms. And then you become selfish because you only see that it is good for you, you can't think if it will be good for the whole. The whole be damned. I want it to be good for me. Ah, I have faith that that politician will give me a salary increase. Very good. Where the money comes from doesn't matter to you, you are thinking only about yourself, the rest doesn't matter. So that's it my brothers, these are the limiting beliefs, in which you only think about yourself they don't think about the whole. And much worse, you don't think about whether what you are instructed to do is good for you and for the whole. You act like manipulated dolls, which you do, whoever is manipulating you up there asks, and then you complain, oh, complain, they complain all the time. Wow, he didn't do anything he said, God has abandoned me, God doesn't help me. I have so much faith and I get nothing back. That's all you say, because you think it's enough to have faith, the rest doesn't matter. I have faith. Your walk doesn't matter, what you're going to do, do you have faith? And nothing works. Well, I think my faith is little. Why doesn't anything work? Look at your walk, look at what you decide, look at what you emanate, and see how you are walking. If there is the possibility of some being of light looking out for you in this way, according to what you do. So my brothers, these are the limiting beliefs, that you don't stop to think about, you simply believe, and they follow what they are told like a bunch of puppets, even if you think it's not right, which is wrong. But you follow, because someone said it was right. Interesting. So now I'm also going to talk about the second point regarding beliefs. So, I'm no longer talking about limiting beliefs. I'm talking about beliefs in something. Very good. Many of you have the image of Sananda at home, they have the image of Mary, have the image of Buddha, they have the image of N beings of light, they have my image, it doesn't matter. Ah, I have faith and then he looks at that image and personifies us, and they have faith in that image. I won't repeat what I said in the previous item, because it's the same thing, it's the same thing. He has faith and thinks everything is fine. Because I have the image in my house, I am totally protected. The house has discord every day, everyone fights, everyone emanates bad feelings. But the image that is there is protecting my house. Then the house suffers something, then you look at the image, wow, I thought you were protecting my house. It's interesting. You do a lot of nonsense, 
you only emanate bad things and it's our fault for allowing that to happen. My brothers, stop blaming us for not having done anything. Stop it. You attract everything you go through, it's not us. I already told you, each of you receives what you emanate. Try to analyze the feelings you emanate. When you have a problem, don't look at our picture and ask, why? Why did you allow this? This is not the question. The question is, look at our image and say, help me understand the lesson I have to learn here, so that I no longer pass by it. That's the question, not the why. Why it was you who attracted it, your walk attracted what you are going through. Now stop and analyze. What lesson do you have to learn there? Ah, I can't see what the lesson is. Very good. Ask for our help and we will definitely show you what lesson you have to learn, so you don't go through it again. But no, you revolt against us, because we allow it. How did God allow this to happen to me? Interesting. You blame everything on the other, or they blame the high one, because the other has no defense, right? We cannot speak, we cannot fight or fight with you. No, we didn't do anything, no, we can't, right? We don't talk. So you can put all the blame on us, in beings of light. You have to blame someone. So blame us. You are saints, you are perfect, they do nothing wrong, do not attract anything wrong into your life. Everything is all right. We, the beings of light, were the ones who did all this to you, who didn't take care of you properly, easy, right? And keep asking why, why am I going through this, why am I going through that, where is this not the question that needs to be asked? Then you often make small altars, also believing that by having an altar inside the house, everything will be resolved. I tell you one thing, my brothers, having an altar inside your house is very good, because you have a moment of prayer, have that moment of meditation, it is excellent. You create an egregore of light there, perfect, but reverberated throughout your house. There is no point in sitting in front of your altar, saying beautiful things, emanating a lot of love for that being of light that is on that altar, and get up and start fighting with everyone. What good was that altar? Do not have altars at home, thinking that because you have an altar there, your house is shielded, your home is fully protected. Yes, your home will be shielded, your home will be protected if everyone inside vibrates good feelings. If the egregore of love created in that house is large enough to maintain that wall around the house, and yes, we will be there, protecting the entire environment, protecting each one of you. Of course yes, but putting an altar there and asking, ah, protect my entire house, and you fight each other all day long, what protection will you have? If it is a source of discord, of lack of love, it is much greater than anything else. So, my brothers, do not deposit in objects, do not deposit in altars, do not deposit in images, the responsibility for everything that is around you, because that's not how it works. Then you buy something that someone told you will attract money. Very good. You put that in your house. Wow, now my life is going to get back on track. Right. And then you leave there and spend freely, without planning, without thinking. Ah, I'm going to spend it on account, because the money will come in. I'll spend it on my own. Who said the money will come in? Having that object at home does not mean that money will come in. Money will come in if you vibrate responsibility, if you vibrate control, if you really believe that it will come, if you truly believe that you deserve to receive abundance from the universe. So my brothers, everything depends on you. What you put faith in, what you put your trust in, whatever it is, whether it is an object, whether it is an image, whatever it is, whether it is just in the ethereal. Ah, I have faith in so and so. Perfect. So act accordingly in your life, 
to receive the return. Having faith is not enough, it is a first step, but there is a whole context around it, in which what you are placing your faith in, effectively acts. So what do you have to ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom, so that you know how to act correctly. It'll give you an example, you buy something that you think will bring in a lot of money. Then you look at that and say, well, now you're going to bring me a lot of money. No. What you have to convey to that symbol is, may you bring me wisdom, may you bring me control, may you bring me everything I need to make my financial life prosper. Look at the difference. Look at the difference in what you did. You didn't put that object there and believe that it will bring you money at will, that will fall from the sky, no, you are putting yourself there as an apprentice, asking that it brings you wisdom, control, because with wisdom and control, abundance comes, good ideas come, those ideas that will bring that little extra, come, why? Because you're putting yourself in a certain way. Not that you're going to fall from above without you putting in the effort, you are saying that you want to participate in that, that you want to learn that lesson, and become prosperous, abundant, but in a correct way, in a controlled manner, in a responsible way. And then the universe certainly starts to conspire to make this all happen. That's it my brothers. Then you buy an object that someone said will attract health. Very good. You put it inside the house, but you continue with the same habits as always. They take drugs, they get addicted, they smoke, they eat all kinds of junk, but that object will bring health. So you're going to eliminate all that, right? Of course not, of course not. In the same way, you have to anchor in that object, so that it brings you wisdom, balance, in eating, so that you comment fewer possible errors in your diet, in your walk, in your vices. May you heal from your addictions. Look the other way around. See, that you are participating in what is there, not just putting it out there, and saying, do your part. I continue living. Do your part there. No, 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 it's not like that. You are the ones who have to walk. Your walk is what will make what you believe in work, because as long as the walk is crooked, it won't be worth anything. Now if you position yourself as participants in the process, asking for help, help me to be more controlled. I will do my part, I'm going to start changing. Oops. Then the universe says, hmm, I can help with this one, because where is he doing it? He's walking the right way. Then, go buy something that will bring love into the house. Put it there and everyone will live harmoniously. It will be. Then someone arrives and starts fighting, the other person arrives and starts to fight, discussions all the time, but that object had to bring love and it didn't. Wait, who's fighting? Is it the object? They still have more. Many may even say, wow. I bought this to bring love into my home, and we keep fighting. I think what this object brought me was bad luck. Oh, certainly, many will say that, because when I started, way back in the procedures, many of you said that, that their lives were turning upside down, and that they were no longer going to continue, because that was not good. Understand your attitude. You don't look at each other. You do not recognize your mistakes, you simply point the finger, that one is to blame, and you are always perfect, you are always right. So my brothers, belief, faith, whatever it is, does not depend on what you are putting your faith in. He will act, if you do your part. If you think you can do whatever you want, regardless of what's there, it won't work. You have to be a CO participant in what is there, you have to act together, believing that what is there will bring you more than what you are emanating. So if you are looking to improve, if you are looking to have control, if you are looking to evolve, that will help you more and more to follow this path. And then you might even say, wow, after I brought this here to my house, 
everything changed, my life changed. No, it wasn't the object that changed his life, was you. That was an amulet for you to change your life. You changed and the universe recognized it, and gave you more than you were doing. It gave you more of what you are emanating, which is good, for you and for the whole. Realize my brothers, of course objects have energy, images have energies, the images on the wall have energies, but they act when you are emanating what is good, when you are evolving. Then they act as catalysts, increasing what you are doing. Now if you follow the opposite path, don't expect anything from there, because nothing will come from there, of the universe go nothing. So rethink about faith, rethink about beliefs. How do you have faith? How do you believe in things? It's just something to think about. We close here this week. Next week we will have some very interesting topics, regarding everything that was created to manipulate you, of how things got to this point, why? It will be a very interesting week. Then we will have two weeks, which you call party weeks. Over the next week, I will tell you what these two weeks will be like. They will be a little different from what we have been doing all year. Understand my brothers, you are enjoying my messages, they love listening to my messages, very well, but let's be a little less selfish, and think that this one too, needs to have a little rest. Not that you won't have activities. You will have one for each day. So I'm going to prepare something very interesting for you to do in these two weeks. Next year, everything starts normally. Next week, as I said, we will have these topics, and the other two will be a little different, and I will go through, little by little, everything that you have to arrange to do. No, you won't be doing nothing, you just won't have messages. You will have things to do. You will see. Next week, I will go through exactly what you have to provide, for the following week, for the following two weeks. And then I will be absent these last two weeks of the year. We will only return the following week the following year. No, don't be angry. Understand, everyone has to rest, everyone needs to have some relaxation. So, next year, we will have a lot of new things, many the procedures end this year. We will no longer have procedures. We will go, as I will explain, for walks, no, 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 these are not physical walks, we will do little by little, determined, I don't want to use the term procedure, certain processes, that will help, little by little, in your evolution. It will be a totally different way from what we have done to date. So, get ready they assume that everyone needs to take a break. Whoever misses you a lot, listen to old messages. It's always good to hear it more than once. Do it. Listen to the old messages. We will only have questions and answers this Saturday. We won't have it on Sunday. I'm already warning you. We won't have it until tomorrow. And we will return with questions and answers only next year. We already have a huge amount of questions again. So let's take a break again, so that next year, I can answer those that are already here again, and everything will be a little more organized than it is today, so you can know exactly when your question will be answered. This will all be improved. Let's put it this way, that under my guidance, she will clean the house. The house is a little messy, because everything happened too fast for her and she really wasn't able to organize herself properly. So this period will be a period in which for her, she will not rest. She will have a lot of work, but at least she won't have this daily commitment of being here channeling my messages. Ela will be focused on cleaning the house. The house needs to be tidied up. It's as if she received many gifts over time and stuffed them all in a corner and she can't even get into the house anymore because of so much mess. So let's stop. If we don't stop, it won't be able to organize itself, precisely to bring more things to you, to be able to help you even more. 
you will have many more treatments next year than you have today, and they will be done by appointment, everything is beautiful, and you can treat yourself as many times as you want. But she needs to organize herself to make this happen. As it is, she's not succeeding. So I'm warning you in advance. We will only have messages until Friday next week, and we will only have questions and answers tomorrow, neither does Sunday. You have no idea how she is physically, I'm not going to talk about the life she has here, but it's not an easy life. Be sure of that. So we also have to recognize that it also needs to stop, otherwise it will soon collapse. So let's make this stop. I hope you understand from the bottom of your heart. She won't stay away from contact with you, that's not it, everything remains as it is. And that's what I said, you will have tasks for these two weeks, you will have me by your side every day and it will be very good for each of you. I am Archangel Michael. I am here, increasingly seeking to elevate each one of you. And be sure, as much as it may not seem like it sometimes, you have already evolved a lot. Each one of you.